Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Millicent Walker. We begin in South Africa, where former U.S. President Barack Obama is delivering the annual Nelson Mandela Lecture in the main city, Johannesburg. The lecture coincides with events to mark 100 years since the birth of South Africa's first black president, who died in 2013 at the age of 95. The speech by Mr. Obama, the U.S. first black president, focuses on creating conditions for bridging divides, working across ideological lines, and resisting oppression as well as inequality. In the meantime, the South African government says it will tighten its, well, mine safety regulation. This is so as to hold mine operators accountable for accidental deaths in the industry. Safety is a huge issue in South Africa's deep and dangerous mines and increasingly a focus for investors. A spate of debts at Sibanye Steelwater's gold operations, including a seismic event that killed seven miners in early May, has highlighted the risks. Uh, this latest announcement comes after six miners died on Sunday in an underground fire at a copper mine operated by enlisted Palubora Mining, the latest tragedy to hit South Africa's mines. At least 54 miners have been killed in the country's mines since the beginning of 2018. The Nigerian President Mohamed Buhari has taken his anti-corruption crusade to the International Criminal Court at The Hague. Well, he is calling on state parties to support the court with jurisdiction over corruption as well as illicit financial flows by state actors. The President made this demand while delivering the keynote address at the solemn hearing to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the Rome Statute of the ICC. In the President's words, a strong and effective ICC can also act as a catalyst for other justice efforts expanding the reach of accountability. These could include serious cases of corruption by state actors that severely compromise the development and efforts of countries and throw citizens into greater poverty. He further said, quote, cases of illicit financial flows where countries are complicit and obstruct repatriation of stolen assets as the African Union champions anti-corruption these are issues dear to my heart." End of quote. Well, the President also promised the international community that his administration is committed to a free, fair and peaceful 2019 general elections in Nigeria. Referring to the tragic events in the aftermath of the 2011 general elections in Nigeria, which necessitated investigation by the ICC, the President said, quote, Nigeria is preparing to conduct general elections in 2019. I assure you that all hands are on deck to prevent any recurrence of such tragic incidents. We shall do everything possible to ensure that Nigeria witnesses the conduct of free, fair and peaceful elections in 2019." End of quote. President Bari is the only world leader invited to attend the 20th anniversary of the adoption of the ICC Rome Statute. Well, for more perspective, here is uh, let's talk to Voke Igoroje, the executive director of the Rights Education Empowerment and Development Centre. He joins us from our Buddha studios. Uh, thank you for joining us on the program. Today is the 20th anniversary of the ICC. How would you assess the performance of the court in the last 20 years? Thank you very much. Um, I think the court has been working very hard. The court has met uh, some of the, the intentions that uh, formed the creation of the court. Uh, the court came into existence in 1998 by virtue of the Rome Statute after the mandatory 60th ratification. And since then, the court has been working. Presently, the court has 11 cases that is active and also has about four cases under examination of which Nigeria belongs. Of the 11 cases it has, 10 of these cases are in Africa and only one in Eastern Europe, and that is Georgia. Of the 10 cases in Africa, five were by self-referral, that is, they requested themselves to be, uh, to, for the court to investigate crimes in their country, and one, the case of Sudan, was by uh, the Security Council resolution to, uh, for crimes committed in Darfur. Then these are the situations presently before the court. 
So would you say that it's working in terms of their performance? Because we know a number of African countries are pulling out of the ICC due to alleged bias from the court. Um, is the ICC really focused on prosecuting crime in Africa alone? Yeah, I do not think that it is because the ICC is focusing on Africa alone. Don't forget that the ICC works on the basis of complementarity. That is to say that when countries, when domestic jurisdictions are unable or, or willing to act, then the ICC has to act. Because we have weak institutions in Africa, because we have regimes that do not respect the rights of citizens to access to justice, that is why more of the attention has been on Africa. And again, like I said, that of the 10 cases, five were true self-referral. So I don't understand what is the reason for being angry with the court. In any case, the court does its work. The essence of the court is to fight impunity, is to create a room where perpetrators of mass atrocity crimes, crimes such as genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing, and uh, I mean crimes against humanity, and recently the crime of, gen of, uh, the crime of aggression. Now, these four crimes are considered to be the most serious crimes of international concern. And the court, in exercising its authority, has been active and doing well. So in my estimation, I do not agree that uh, the court is biased towards Africa. It is where you have cases that you will certainly have trial. Well, President Bari is also the only world leader invited to attend the 20th anniversary of uh, the court. What do you think this is? What does it say about ICC's relations with perhaps President Buhari of Nigeria and the rest of the world? I perceive that the hostility of the AU has necessitated the uh, invitation by Buhari being that Nigeria is a big player in, in the African Union, and I think so far among the big players, South Africa used to be a friend of the ICC until it started uh, turning its back on the court. I think the ICC needs everybody, every country, to be on deck to work hard to fight impunity. So my sense is that President Buhari is needed to provide a rallying point for the AU to again to support the International the Criminal Court. Break. Because in our own estimation, this is a permanent court that is based in The Hague, that has jurisdictions over persons. And so we must to support to this court break. to fight impunity. Because if you look at the world today, it looks like impunity is now the order of the day. I mean, there are crises everywhere in Africa, in, 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 in the Middle East, in Southeast Asia. There is atrocity everywhere. And it seems that perpetrators are getting away with it. And that's why we must support the court, especially as we mark this 20th anniversary of the adoption of the Rome Statute. We are making a clarion call, especially to the African Union, to rise to the occasion to support the ICC. The ICC is set up to fight impunity, and we must fight impunity. Because when perpetrators know that there is a mechanism for their crimes, for accountability, they will deter, they will stop the crisis they are committing, the killings, the mass destruction of lives everywhere. So I think we need to, we need to support the court. The African Union needs to support the court. And every world power needs to support the court so that the court can stand and do what it's meant to do. All right, many thanks so much, Mr. Voke Igoroje, the Executive Director of the Rights Education, Empowerment and Development Centre, for joining us from Abuja Studios.